So before we get cracking with the next video, just a quick reminder to let you know that courtesy of our sponsor Aftershocks, you can win this pair of Aftershocks Aeropex bone conduction headphones, top of the range with £150 by entering our free competition. All you have to do is click on the link that should be appearing now. Hi, it's Craig from Scratch Golf Life and in this episode I'm going to show you my golf simulator room, how I put it together and everything you need to know in case you're thinking of doing the same thing. Okay, let's get cracking. So, welcome to my happy place. This is my golf simulator room. Okay, so let's firstly run through everything you're going to need to have the full golf simulator experience and then we'll go through it in a bit more detail. You are going to need a launch monitor. You are going to need a hitting impact screen. You are going to need a golf mat. You are going to need a PC, preferably a gaming PC that is very powerful. And you are going to need a projector. Once you have all of those things and you have the room somewhere in your home or office or wherever you're thinking of doing it, then you can have the full golf simulator experience. Okay, so let's just go into a little bit more detail about which ones I went for and why I went for them. Okay, so when you first start to think about putting a simulator room into your house, garage, uh, office, wherever it might be, the one thing you must get right is to work out your dimensions. So within here, I am at what I would think of as being absolute minimum dimensions. So let's start with ceiling height. My ceiling height is only 2.56 meters. The reason I can get away with such a low ceiling height is the fact that my roof is actually rafters and I have just put material into the roof to finish the room off. So I can swing a driver in here, absolutely no problem whatsoever. I have had some friends that have come around that swing it a little bit steeper and they have grazed the fabric, but that doesn't cause any problem obviously. But if it was a solid roof, then we would have a problem. I would say that if you've got a solid roof, you're gonna need a minimum of three meters. Okay, now on to width. My width is only 2.3 meters. Again, this is very tight. Again, everyone who comes round has been able to swing every club in their bag in here. But what it does mean is that actually I've had to offset my mat to the right hand side so that swings don't interfere with this wall that is behind us. So uh, it doesn't really cause any massive issue. It just means that my ball isn't lined up with the center of my screen. And you just have to remind everyone that to hit a straight shot, you are hitting into the right-hand side of the screen and not the middle of the screen. Uh, you know, in an ideal world, we would have more width than this and we'd be able to line everything up with the centre line on the range and on where the ball is on TGC 2019. So, you know, 2.3 metres, very tight in here, but you can quite easily fit uh, everything in here with that kind of width and be able to swing every club in your bag. And lastly, I am 2.2 meters from my screen. So the reason, again, people would advise that you need to be a little bit further away than that. This has not caused me any problem whatsoever. But the main reason is that at the back of the room here, when my buddies come round, we want to make sure that we've got enough room for three people. So we have two people standing at the back, one usually sitting down and another one standing up and obviously someone hitting their shot. If we moved it any further away from the screen, then back swings are going to be getting a bit near to the people standing at the back of the room. But again, 2.2 metres, absolutely no problem whatsoever uh, with that kind of distance from the screen. So just a quick recap on that. Ceiling height in here is 2.56, but I recommend 3 metres. My width is 2.3 meters ideally i would want double that at around five and a half meters six meters in an ideal world and my screen is 2.2 meters and again in an ideal world i suppose you want to be somewhere nearer to three meters away from your screen
probably the most important piece of equipment you're going to get is your launch monitor so i went with the skytrack launch monitor i chose it because i just thought it was the best value for money option if i could afford a gc quad or a trackman or a gc2 then i would definitely have gone for one of those systems because they also give you club as well as ball tracking but i can't afford those you know they are ridiculously expensive for, for £2,200, which is still a lot of money, but I do think that is money very well spent with the Skytrack. Uh, other people do tell me about the Mevo Plus. Uh, I don't know enough about that system to be able to give any advice on it, but it might also be a really good low-cost uh, launch monitor option that has ball tracking capabilities. The next thing is your mat. Now this is one of the things that I really recommend you do not try and go cheap and save money because a cheap mat will lead to back trouble and joint ache as well. You want a good quality uh, golf mat. I went with uh, a three ply professional golf mat. It's got a lot of padding and cushioning underneath which means it's got a little bit of give in it, makes it more comfortable to hit shots off. Uh, it cost me around £250, if I remember rightly, uh, and it was definitely money well spent because I've seen other people on forums who've gone with a cheap mat and have actually led to, you know, really quite serious trouble with their body from uh, not having enough cushioning in their golf mat. Next is the impact screen. So this is actually my new screen. It only arrived today. And it is a archery mesh screen with a blackout behind it. So the good thing about having the blackout behind it is that it means that the image from the projector is held very, very sharply on the screen. If it didn't have the blackout behind, the projector light would tend to go through the screen and you'd lose some of the clarity of the image. So you can go with cheaper screens than this, but again, I had a cheaper one before this. I mean, to be fair, it did last about two and a half years, but it didn't hold the image anywhere near as well as that one does. And after two and a half years, it started to break down and my ball started to go through the actual fabric. I think on some of my previous videos, you saw that in the background. Uh, and, you know, but more than anything else, it didn't hold the image as well as this one. So I would recommend really investing in a good impact screen. So I got this from InSwing Golf. I found Dave at InSwing Golf to be very helpful. I'll put their contact details up now. Uh, and I also got my Skytrack from InSwing Golf as well. So InSwing Golf has everything you're going to need and specialise in golf simulator equipment. So uh, I, from just from my experience, I'm not paid by Dave to say this. I have no affiliation with InSwing Golf. Just purely from my own personal experience, I found them to be very helpful and have really good high quality products. And I really recommend getting a high quality screen because it will last you and save you money in the long run. Next is your PC. Okay, so if you are going to be wanting to run core software like TGC 2019 or E6 Connect and be able to go and play the 12th at Augusta National, which we've got loaded up on the screen there, then you are going to need a powerful PC to run this software. It has got 4K graphics and you need a gaming PC in order to effectively run that kind of software. So my PC I've got here, which I got secondhand off eBay, uh, runs the Skytrack software absolutely no problem whatsoever because that doesn't really need as much power. But on my TGC 2019, when I hit my shot, the ball is just a little bit choppy, a bit juddery. It's not a completely smooth flight because the graphics card is just struggling a little bit. So it's actually going on uh, Monday for an upgrade, 
which is what four days away uh where hopefully when it comes back we'll have nice smooth ball flight on the uh tgc 2019 courses so again this is another thing you know i tried to save some money here it's ended up with me having to pay some more money to get it upgraded just get a really good strong powerful gaming pc and then you'll be able to run the skytrack software and the core software without any issues whatsoever And the last thing that you're going to need for the full simulator experience is a projector. Okay, so my advice on projector is that I actually went quite cheap on the projector. That is just a very standard uh, 1080p HD projector. Uh, as you can see, it projects the image really well. It's nice and sharp. You know, I could have got like a really expensive 4K projector. And I'm sure it would be, you know, it would be better. But again, I've not looked at that and thought, you know what, that's just not good enough. I want to get a better one. That's never occurred to me. Uh, the one thing that has occurred to me is that I should have got what they call a throw projector. So if I had a throw projector that had the same resolution, then my picture would look exactly the same, which I'm happy with. But I would be able to fill that entire screen with the image which you see on a lot of you know uh, other people's golf simulators. So at some point I probably will upgrade to a throw projector so I can completely fill that screen with the image just so it looks better. Uh, it doesn't take anything away from the experience, to be honest. It's more of a luxury than a necessity, but I do advise you getting a throw projector for your golf simulator. Okay, so that is the walk through my home golf simulator and everything that you would need if you're wanting to do something similar. Uh, it is worth just pointing out that you can do it a little bit cheaper. You can go without the projector and the impact screen. You could just buy a very cheap golf net off eBay and just hit it into the net and then just watch the result of your shot on your PC monitor. That works fantastically well and still gives you that, obviously, ability to come and work on your game and play golf in your house. Uh, but if you do want the full golf simulator immersive experience, then I do recommend the projector and the impact screen. Uh, other things I've done in here that I just quickly go through. I've got some uh, putting AstroTurf that I put down here between the mat uh, and the screen. Also put some foam tiles underneath that, uh, which makes it nice and soft to walk on. But also, more importantly... When the ball hits the screen and drops down it's just you know doesn't make any noise whatsoever uh, i've put some driver range netting on this side here and all the way around the back of the screen that's just to make sure that if anyone shanks it not me obviously uh, the ball doesn't go ricocheting all around the garage and doing untold damage uh, it goes around the back of the screen as well i don't need that as much now because this because this impact screen is so good but with my previous screen it was just there as an extra insurance policy to make sure that the ball was going to be stopped in its tracks other things left to do in here uh, i'm probably going to put some artwork on the wall uh, always remember that what is ever is opposite to your sky track it needs to be some kind of blank canvas something that contrasts the golf ball really well makes it a lot easier for the uh, sky track to pick up the spin of your ball when it takes all those photographs uh, and you get really accurate measurements so that artwork will only go about halfway down uh, i may upgrade the projector at some point to like a 4k projector that is a throw short throw one so I'll be able to fill the screen a bit better. I see that really as a, a luxury and not a necessity. Uh, apart from that, you know, we're pretty much done. I'm very lucky to have this. It really has come into its own in lockdown. That was just, you know, just very lucky on my part. I didn't put it in because of lockdown. It was already put in before, you know, this pandemic came along. Uh, before the pandemic came along, every Thursday night, we used to have simulator nights in here with some friends have a few beers, get the music going, load up one of the top courses from around the world. We had a league, you know, that was, you know, every Thursday we played a different course. We played it all the way through winter. Uh, 
we used handicaps and you know there was a league scoring system just absolutely great fun this used to be such a great laugh uh, and such good fun to do yeah, so look forward to starting those again so that's i know another great thing that you can do but it's also just a great tool for working on your game as well so that's it if you've got any questions put them in the comments below i will uh, do my very best to answer them for you if you're looking for a bit of help or a bit of advice for putting your own simulator together uh, apart from that that's it for now okay we're going to be bringing you more videos from inside this simulator studio uh, as soon as we can get back out on the golf course we'll start doing content from the golf course as well but until then we're indoors keeping it nice and safe and uh, we'll see you next time